Hi, this is Larry Jordan. The following is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on managing media in Final Cut Pro 10. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to work with keywords in Final Cut. Well, let's create a new event here. I'm going to select my second drive, File, New Event. And I want to show you something that's really, really cool. We're going to call this Pond 5. Okay, now let's switch back up to the hard disk. Go to our second drive. As we scroll down in the Media Samples folder, in the Pond 5 folder, we're right there. What I've done is I've taken all of my Pond 5 clips and I've divided them into five groups. Animals, dancing, people, scenic, and space. And the individual clips are contained inside that folder. Well, getting organized before I start at it is, is second nature because I've discovered that if you start organized, you stay organized. If you start disorganized, then chaos reigns by the end of your project. So I've got a containing folder. Call this Scene 1. And maybe this is all of Camera 1 or Camera 2. I don't care how you group it. The names you use for the folders, there's, you can call it anything you want. But here's the power of getting your clips organized before you import them into Final Cut. If we go back to Final Cut, and I click on Import Media, and go to Media Samples, and I'm going to go back up here, and go to Pond 5. There it is. There's my folders. You can see them there. But I'm selecting the containing folder called Pond 5 and click Import Selected. When I check Import Folders as Keyword Collections, Final Cut will assign as a keyword to each clip in the Animals folder the Animals folder name or the Dancing folder name. So in this case, I'm not going to create proxy media. And to save a bit of time, I'm not going to create optimized media because I just want to use this as an illustration. So I'm going to click Import. Once the Import window disappears, look what's happened. In the event, it's created keyword collections. These are all of my Pond5 clips all different categories, all different types and styles. If I click on animals, I just see my animal clips. If I click on people, I just see my people clips. And if I click on scenic, I see just my scenic clips. Now, Final Cut's busy building thumbnails of all these clips and storing them inside the event, so it takes a second or so for the images to appear, but that's just simply because it's creating all the thumbnails that it needs. It doesn't take long, and I could start editing this even while the thumbnails are being done. Such cuties. All right, so let's add something here. Let's take dancing and go find our Cambodian dancer right there. And I want to assign a keyword of people to her. Well, to assign keywords to a clip, click this key icon, and she's already been assigned the dancing keyword. We'll also assign a people keyword. And when I press enter, notice the keyword animates back into the clip. And we'll just close this. Now, not only does our Cambodian dancer appear in the dancing keyword collection, when I go to people, she also appears inside the people collection. Well, we can get even deeper into this in terms of keeping track of our media by going up to here. For instance, if I select the containing event, which has got, oh, 33 clips in it, and I say, just show me the clips that have barns, I type in in the text search and all the clips that have barns in either the file name or the notes field assigned to each clip, and we can get to the notes field by switching to list view and dragging all the way across. You see there's a notes column, which allows us to add a note about a clip. I can search for all the clips that have barn in either the file name or the notes field. Click this X in a circle right here to clear it. But here's where the real power comes in. If we click the magnifying glass, I could search for text, but in this case I don't want to. Instead, I click and hold the plus key. I can search on ratings. I can search on media types or clip name or images that have been flagged for stabilization, which I never do because it takes a lifetime to go through all those clips. But I can select keywords. These are all the keywords that are associated with that event. 
and this window will expand as you add more keywords. Well, I don't want to see animals, so I'm going to uncheck that. And I don't want to see scenic, so I'm going to uncheck that. And I don't want to see our space shots. I just want to see all the clips that are either dancing or people. And that's what we've got here. I either have people or objects dancing. Include any means that it wants to see all the clips that are either dancing or, it's a logical or, or people. So it can have the dancing keyword or the people keyword. If I only want to see clips that are both people and dancing, they have to have both keywords, switch this to include all. And there's only one clip, our Cambodian dancer, that has both a dancing keyword and a people keyword. This allows me to use keywords to drill down into my project. Show me all the scene 21 shots that include the girl in a red dress. Or show me all the exterior shots that were shot on a particular day. However you decide to keyword, you can drill into it. And if we ever need to delete a keyword, for instance here, click on the key and I'm going to just highlight the word people, hit the delete key, boom, it's taken out. And notice that now, because I've got that smart collection going on, no clips have both dancing and people associated with them. To close the keyword, we'll just click in the top left corner to clear the search. See, there's a really hard to see blue key right here. To clear that search, click the X in the circle and it's gone. And now we see all our clips again. So we can add keywords by selecting the clips clicking on the key function and typing in whatever keyword we want to assign. We can delete keywords by highlighting the clip and highlighting the keyword we want to remove. We can search for keywords. Let's just assign, okay, let's do command K and give her a people again. Okay, now let's go back to our smart collection. I don't want to search for text. I want to search for all dancing and people. And there's the girl on the bridge. Okay, now I'm going to save this as a smart collection, and I'm going to call this People and Dancing. Notice the keyword collection is light blue, the smart collection is uh, purple. And let's go back up to Pond 5, and let's find another person dancing here. Uh, we'll go back to our Cambodian dancer, Command K, People. And notice inside our smart collection, as fast as we click it, now both of those clips, it's dynamically updated. Both those clips are now displayed. This is really powerful, and a lot of people overlook it, and they think they have to enter all the keywords manually, but if you structure your folders properly, you can have a lot of essential keywording done at the folder level. And you can have as many keywords as you want assigned to a clip. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on media management inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store and look for Webinar 109. By the way, membership is a great value. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 600 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. And thanks.